Today we are out here testing the whatever it's called, 18th scale Capra, UTV 18 or something like that. Whatever they call it, it's not on the vehicle. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about here. It is the 18th scale Capra. It's, uh, it's all stock right now, completely stock. There's our steering speed. Let's look at our low speed control like we always do. It's, it's a little twitchy. I can tell you that it is not the motor, but it is the speed controller because I can hear that there's really not much before we get started. It just goes wee and starts up, boop, boop. So a little touchy on that, but it's a stock system. What are you gonna expect? And let's look at our wheel speed on a 2S LiPo. Whoa, wheelie time. Yeah, it's pretty fast. I honestly don't think I would want it any faster than this, at least for stock, for sure. So there we go. Let's see, it's got a lot of ground clearance. So maybe, oh, it's so close. I bet I can bump over it. Yeah, I can bump over it. It does have a lot of clearance. Uh, I would probably, if I were to start making modifications, I would reduce my ground clearance a little bit. Maybe do a little bit of a droop setup with uh, identical. Oh, it doesn't quite have enough wheel speed to get out of this. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I would, I would add a little bit of droop, so maybe more weight or less uh, spring on here. But let's get it on the course. I feel like this may be the magical size to where I can do everything that a 10th scale could do as long as I'm really paying attention. So let's, let's just find out. Of course, the tires are stock, so we'll, we'll see how good they are. But sometimes with these small rigs, you can bypass the sections that would normally be a little bit too hard, kind of like go to the side and like how I'm, how I'm going through this crack here. Oh, oh, already getting it bound, bound down. Okay, okay, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, we'll try again. We'll try again. Little hand of God, instead of uh, getting myself caught into the crack, maybe I can stay on top. Oh, the t the t t I was going to say the tires are too tiny, but here we go. Yep, not the best low speed control, but again, it's totally stock and it is an 18 scale. But does it have the reach? Oh, look at that. I think, I think we may have it. That is impressive. That is really impressive. So right out of the box, uh, maybe a little tall, <laughs> maybe a little top heavy, but right out of the box, being able to make that climb is very impressive. I'm just gonna have to be careful going down this. Boink. Now I do remember that they are selling a complete front axle by itself so that you can convert this to four-wheel steering, which is really cool. Now, having a full-size servo on the back, oh, wow, I didn't expect it to make that. Having a full-size servo on the back is gonna be a lot of weight, so to counteract that, you would have to certainly add some more forward bias or add, yeah, I'm gonna get myself wedged into here, I don't wanna break it yet. You would need to add some weight bias or add uh, something, lost my train of thought, uh, reduce the weight of the body, do something to offset having a servo on the back. But you know, that's, that's future mods. I don't, I don't need to talk about future mods. Incredibly capable for the size of the rig. Now, uh, got an old story for you about back in the day in the 2.2 comp class, there was no restrictions on how small you could get for a while. And the same for the super class. There was no res restrictions on how small the rig could be, but everybody built rigs pretty much to the size of the maximums. In one year, one of our best drivers in the world at the time, he decided that he was gonna try running a 2.2 rig in the super class. And he cleaned up just because like this rig on this 10th scale course, this is essentially my 10th scale course, he was able to bypass a lot of the hard sections 
and still had the ability to walk up. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna break gears in this. I don't wanna get it bound down too much. But he actually won that year and caused a sweeping rule change on a minimum size. Because just like this rig, if you can bypass, like right here, I can just go around that one rock that I was hanging up on. As long as I have enough tire height to get onto this, then bam, no problem. I must say the tire compound on this is surprising, surprisingly good. Low speed control is not, <laughs> but again, it's a stock setup. I'm, I'm usually pretty hard on judging stock setups. And it's also a lower cost rig, so here we go. Well, this thing's just walking through, really digging this. Man, with a couple of mods, maybe going with slightly bigger tires. Are these uh, 4.19s? 3.6s. Put some 4.19s on this thing, like the, the 1.9 comp class would normally have, and it would just be a beast. I would definitely want to lower it, maybe add a little bit of wheelbase to it. And I know I'm... I'm I'm already talking about getting to that point of you buy the rig and you throw the whole thing away already, but uh, <laughs> this, I have a feeling that this rig is going to reinvigorate a lot of 1.9 style comp classes. And I, I have a feeling that I'm going to break a ring and pinion or a, a portal gear trying to, trying to do this, but let's find out. I'm still able to get through it and certainly tons of clearance let's see will it take this undercut oh i'm, st I'm stalling the motor there we go so you know it, it's just little sealed can 37 turn motor which we've already got the 380 v2 brushless motor that you can drop into this thing with very minimal mods and i am starting on some 380 motors for it and this just might be the push for me to do a nice rebuildable 380 motor we'll find out I've, I've got to do a little bit of work on it, but we will have more of like a stock replacement, stock drop-in replacement that is much higher quality. I don't know if I'm going to go faster. Let, let me know in the comments what you would want. This is a 37 turn. I would do a 37 turn and something in the 40 turn range, but I don't know if I want to go any faster. We're already stalling out. We're already going to be putting the ESC under load. And if I add a 10% wheel speed change to the motor doing, you know, something like a 35 turn range, or uh, 32 turn range, then we're gonna be creating a lot more heat. 10% increase in motor speed is gonna give us 21% increase in heat in the ESC, and that's a lot for a stock ESC. So I really don't know if I wanna do that. And, and besides that, again, the stalling, going to a faster motor is going to make more stalling, even if we do have much higher quality. It, it may not quite work out because we're limited in brush size, small motor. The brush is going to be our choke point. Oh, and while I'm staring at, at these rock lights, these are bright. It's hard to see right now outdoors, but these rock lights are really bright. And it's honestly, I like having the rock lights. I've never been one to install them onto my rig unless I need to. But it is pretty fun to just be able to go out at nighttime and wheel and see what you're doing without bringing a headlamp. All right. I uh, and am 100% impressed with this rig. This is doing a lot better than I expected, even with the relatively heavy molded cage. Much more ground clearance than it should have for the wheelbase, in my opinion but it's doing really good. It, you know, as long as the driver's doing good, I guess. Uh, the only problem with the smaller rigs, not really a problem, it's more of a preference, I guess, is that when they flip over, they flip over extremely fast. A really big heavy rig, it's got your weight really far out and it goes to t turn over and you've got a year and a day to watch it. And with this, you just saw how quick that was that you get into a position and your tires are, are too high or whatever, and it just flops so fast. It's, it's very hard to predict. You have to know your rig extremely well. And I don't know this rig at all, obviously. This is the first time I've driven it. 
Oh, is it going to hook? Are these tires that soft? Is it going to hook? Not quite. Overall though, super impressed. Is it gonna hook? I mean, I would expect it that it's not, and it does. Look at that. Jeez, for such a tiny rig, extremely capable. I would take this out on any of the trails that we would go on. I don't feel like I need to modify this. Uh, if you have seen, I'm guessing it's gonna get released first, the SCX6 crawl that I come out here and the rig is just too big and, and bumbly to even have fun out here. I'd, I'd have fun walking behind on a trail or something, but the ups and downs are too tight for a big rig and then the features are too small for it to actually be a problem for the big rig. But this rig, even though it is so tiny, it's just perfect size for everything. Uh, and the tinier rigs is usually easier to find hard spots to crawl on. And I'm sure this one is really no different, but I'm able to point and shoot and just make it through everything. So very impressed with how they sized it. They called it 1 18th, that's arbitrary. They sized it, in my opinion, the perfect size for a smaller crawler, but not so small that it no longer really becomes a crawler. You get to a point to where a rig can be so small that you, you just can't take it outdoors and do anything. So this one, an outdoor crawler, 100% all the way. I would take it out, put it on some trails, have some fun with it. We will see how the TRX4M does. I'm gonna attempt to bring it out here, but I, I, I already know it's got really tiny tires. It's gonna be great for indoors crawling, but for outdoors crawling, I think it might be too small. And oh boy, I've, I've wrapped up my front tire here. I'm, I'm not gonna try to get this out. I, I literally am underneath rocks right there. So if you, if you try to power out of this, you know, I'm either moving the rock out of the way or I'm breaking gears, I feel. So, uh, okay, I'll just move the rock out of the way, I guess, and, and try not to break gears. Uh, let's see, overall impressions. If we're going to ignore the price on a new rig like this, I would give it a 10 out of 10, honestly, with, with this. Now, is it gonna last? Is it gonna break? Is the servo gonna burn out on me? I don't know yet, but first impressions, 10 out of 10 for the capability of this rig and the, the tire compound. Uh, the steering servo is plenty for the height and the weight and everything of the rig. Now, let's talk about it being about $240. I'm gonna knock it down a couple of pegs for that because this, this is a smaller rig. You know, they, they've still got all their distribution. They've still got all their overhead. They, the molding cost isn't gonna be much less, so I understand why it is at that price, but I would assume that a smaller rig isn't going to be the same as an element. The, the element is practically the same price as this guy, but this guy is much smaller and there's a, you know, less motor, less servo, less everything going on with it. So eight out of 10, 7.5 out of 10, if we include that price in there, but it is axial racing quality, which we know that they're going to be good at this point. And the aftermarket for this, I, I know people on the back end, what they're working on, and the aftermarket for this rig is going to be incredible. There is not going to be another 18th scale rig that has the aftermarket parts that this has as quickly out of the gate. The Traxxas one is going to have aftermarket, but I can almost guarantee you, and I, again, I know people that are working on aftermarket, is going to be more of stock replacement parts that are made out of metal, which is what Traxxas is also doing, instead of being replacement parts that are performance upgrades. This has performance upgrades coming for it already and it's just barely been released. So because of that, I would bring the 7.5 up to eight because we've already got a strong aftermarket that is bubbling up for us. And that tells me that other people, other designers have also enjoyed it that much. And the, what separates a lot of rigs in the market is whether or not they get a strong aftermarket following. The only detriment to the Element Enduro platform is that the aftermarket following has not been as strong as some of the other axial platforms or even the Traxxas platform. Although the Traxxas platform, it tends to be more stock aftermarket replacement to where it's just like metal parts that are made of the same size and shape and everything like that. <laughs> well, our steering, <laughs> our, our servo is strong enough to bend that, that steering link. So I think we already know what the first, <laughs> the first upgrades are going to be to that wet, <laughs> that wet noodle there. I mean, it's good that the plastic is flexible and it's not breaking, but 
that's uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, we're at least keeping our servo from. <laughs> <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's that's noodly. Uh, but you know, if, if I'm not binding it down like a comp crawler would, then it's not going to really be much of an issue. So uh, let's see. Did I finish with my rating? Yeah, I would bring that 7.5 back up to an eight, even though it is a little bit expensive in my opinion, in my taste. But you do have not only the support of Axial Racing, the the warranty support that they would have, being a large company. Uh, the longevity that I'm going to assume is going to come out of these axles in particular because the transmission and the axles are really what's important for long-term aftermarket support. The frame, we can replace the frame. We can put a different body on there it, and it's still going to be the, can we get the axles? Can we get the axle parts? Can we get the housings, the gears, etc.? And can we get a transmission that mates up to it, which isn't going to be an issue with parts builders these days. We'll have transmissions that adapt to it or that even go into the, this, this actual frame. So, yeah, this, this one actually has me really excited. I ended up babbling on about all sorts of things that really aren't pertinent to this actual rig, I suppose. But, oh, careful there, cameraman. He's on the edge of the pond. He's on the edge. So I'm, yeah, I could just keep crawling with this guy. Uh, hey, let's, let's test uh, as a final thing. Let's see, is the servo warm? The servo's a little warm. Yeah, and I would assume I was really getting that thing bound down. How is the motor? Can I get to the motor? There we go. It's warm, but it's not overly hot. It, it smells of hot coils, but I don't think that this motor is going to burn out treating it like I was and getting it bound down as much. I, I was almost fully stalling this out with full throttle a few times. Uh, so we can use that assumption to say that a 37 turn is going to be a good choice that's not going to overheat the ESC and not going to overheat the motor because with a brush motor and you go too fast then you you just have problems with overheating let's see if I can get to the ESC I don't think that I can unfortunately it's a probably an all-in-one sort of deal let's see where do our wires go they go up this way over this way Where is that? Where is it hiding? Can I get to it? I want to see if it's hot. I was not easy on it. Wires. Oh, <laughs> they went this way just so they could go back the other way. I think, is that our ESC hiding behind here? Yeah, yeah, there it is. There it is. I found it. I need some baby hands to get in here. There's no way. There it is. Found it. The ESC is mildly warm. It's uh, maybe a 60 degree day right now, 55 degrees. So a lot of assumptions that we can make off of this data of it not overheating, despite me treating it badly. 37 turn, Axial got that just right. The gearing, it seemed to be pretty good. Could it use more gear down? Yeah, probably so. But uh, we'll deal with that in the future. There's a lot of things that this could use. Of course, like uh, <laughs> like maybe a steering rod that's a, a little less flexy than that. But of course, we increase the stiffness of that, and then we're probably going to be breaking the knuckles instead. So, six of one, half a dozen of the other. But this, eight out of ten. This is not six of uh, six of. <laughs> this is not half of a dozen. This is uh, seven seven eight out of ten. I would give it. Cool. This one's going to go on the shelf for me to play with. I'm excited. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn this off. And uh, if you got any questions about it, let me know in the comments. I know I just talked this time instead of posing you questions. So leave them in the comments below if you do have them. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.